everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be starting yet another reading vlog for you guys, but I am super excited about this one because we do have a theme this week. So I decided that since it is finally September, I want to get into my, you know, like spooky atmospheric fall reading. And I feel like September is like the perfect time to pick up dark academia books. So I have only read a single dark academia book in my life. That was The Secret History by Donna Tartt, obviously a classic. I didn't really love it, to be honest, so I didn't really gravitate towards other dark academia books for a long time. Like, I really like the aesthetic that goes along with it. Like, kind of that dark school setting with a gothic vibe, people are being murdered, that kind of thing. Like, that whole aesthetic, I do very much enjoy. But I have not read a proper dark academia book since I read The Secret History, so I decided that in an attempt to kind of figure out if I actually like dark academia books or not, I should just try reading them for a week and we can see what I think of them. So I have three books that I am planning on reading this week and honestly I have a feeling that I'm really gonna like them. So let's talk about them. First of all, we have the ever iconic If We Were Villains by Emil Rio. I believe you're following a group of Shakespearean actors. I believe one of them went to jail 10 years ago for a crime that we're not exactly sure if he actually committed or not. And then there is a reunion, so they all kind of get together for the reunion and I believe we're going to figure out who, I don't know, murdered somebody. I don't know what the crime was, but considering it's dark academia, I'm going to assume that somebody was murdered. So I'm really excited about this one. Then obviously we also have Babel by Arf Kwong. This one I'm also super excited about. Shockingly enough, I feel like it would be remiss of me not to read Babel in a dark academia video. So obviously here she is. This one takes place in Oxford, I believe in the early 1800s. I also believe there is a fantasy element to this one, which I am very intrigued by because I feel like the melding of dark academia and fantasy could be something like I absolutely adore, but I've also heard that the fantasy elements aren't like super prevalent. So I'm interested to see what I think. I just read The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang and I very much enjoyed it. It's not a new favorite, but I really liked it. So I've been really excited to jump into something different by R.F. Kuang. And then I also wanted something that was YA to kind of give me a, a better taste for like different types of dark academia out there. So I picked up A Lesson in Vengeance by Victoria Lee. This one I do believe takes place at a boarding school, which I'm already excited about because the boarding school, it's centuries old, it's ivy covered, it's up in the mountains, it's spooky, I think. So like already the setting drew me in. But then I read a little bit more of the synopsis and apparently our main character's girlfriend was murdered. So that's not good. Also, the dormitory that she's staying in is rumored to be haunted by the spirits of five Dalloway students, which is the boarding school that she's at. And some people say that those girls were witches. So that sounds like a lot of different elements being added into this. I really hope that they're like actually witches or like actually ghosts in this book because that would just be top tier, but we will see. So here are the three books that I'm going to be reading this week. Also, do not worry, this entire vlog will be spoiler free. So if you haven't read any of these, it's all good. But I am super excited to get into these books, to get into some dark academia. Honestly, I just feel like September is the perfect month for dark academia because obviously everybody's going back to school. Recently, you know, I went back to school. I don't think any of my school experiences are going to be quite as harrowing or intriguing as any of the experiences chronicled in these books, but... Like, I get it. So I'm going to get into it. I think I'm going to start out with the book out of the stack that is intimidating me the most. And that's mainly just because it's 550-ish pages. And that is Babel. So I'm going to get into it. Also, can we talk about the flop on this book? I mean, oh my god. Like, it's not the best, but it's still like... Ooh, actually, no, that is really good. So I'm going to get into this one, read a little bit of it, and I will give you guys some initial thoughts and feelings in a little bit. Thank you. 
get into talking about Babel because I have made some progress. I finished up book one because this is split into like five different sections that are just called books. So I finished up book one and I am now on page 93 and I am really enjoying this so far. So this is following our main character Robin who grew up in China until his family was wiped out by cholera and this seemingly random English dude kind of just shows up at his house and he's like, Come with me, we're going to London, I'm going to raise you and educate you so you can then go to Oxford and study translation. So the first couple chapters of this book follow Robin as he is traveling to London, kind of being educated in this really rich guy's home by these random people in, I think, Greek and Latin. So he can then use like that prior knowledge to get into Oxford so he can study translation. So then after that you do eventually see him as he goes to Oxford and he's meeting a bunch of new people. Obviously there are just people studying a lot of things in general, but we are mainly focusing on a group of people who are also studying translation. And I'm really interested to see what is going to come of this group because they all kind of represent different minority groups in the college. And obviously Oxford was most prevalently white. So seeing them kind of make their place and see how they fit into that dynamic is really interesting but also really sad because there's not really much of a place for that in the school. However, it seems in like Babel, which is the place where they study, there seems to be a lot of foreign born people who have been brought to Oxford specifically so they could translate things, which I think is kind of going to lead into the main question of this book and kind of like what the tagline of it is and that is is translation an act of betrayal like is translating your country's text for you know the people of the british empire an act of betrayal on them so i'm interested to see the conversations that are going to come of that i think there are also just going to be a bunch of other different conversations happening in this book as well because so far you can kind of see that the themes that it's setting up are mainly colonialism imperialism and like just the general negative impact that the british empire was having on the world at this point because while you're following robin and like his own journey you do get like snippets of things that are happening in the world as well as like footnotes kind of giving a lot of historical context for things that were going on and I think that kind of leads to this book reading as nonfiction, like just a little bit, but not in a way that I find boring. I actually find it to be quite interesting to see what the state of the world was at that point in time. I also just generally think that this book kind of reads like historical fiction because while it does have like a fantasy element in it, I think the fantasy element is also heavily rooted in history. And you also just have the entire backdrop of this book being what life was like in England in the 1830s. Also, like I said, there is a fantasy element, which I'm very, intrigued to see like what that's all about because I'm still a little bit confused on it but from what I'm getting is like there are these little silver bars and you can like embed them in things or just like use them to do certain things like as an example our main character was like taking a ride in a coach one day and there was this silver bar embedded in the floor and apparently that silver bar like enabled the coach to go faster and safer or something like that so kind of that general concept i don't know i'm interested to see where that's gonna go because i'm sure that's kind of only scratching the surface but we've seen like a couple of other things that i think are pretty cool so i'm hoping we get to see more of like what that's all about also can i just say i love the setting for this book like hearing all of the descriptions of oxford is everything that i needed and very much dark academia <laughs> you know which is like the point of this book but like hearing the descriptions of the buildings stunning honestly i'm excited to read some more i can't wait to see what is going to happen in the rest of this book i'm also a little bit scared but um yeah let's um let's go read some more and i will talk to you guys probably tomorrow <laughs>
next morning and I do have another update on Babel. I just made it to book three. So I'm on page 220 now. This book honestly just continues to be so fascinating and I feel like the last book I read really expanded on the magic system. And it is so, like, it's so cool. I love a hard magic system. While I prefer soft magic systems, I love reading about hard magic systems as well. Because in this book, I'm not gonna exactly tell you what it is because it's really interesting to kind of figure that out for yourself. But there's definitely like a set way that things have to be done. And like the way that translation is used in the magic system is so cool. And I like, it's, it's such a concept. Like, I love the magic system so much. But also, I'm starting to see how the magic system is also going to tie into the concept of, like, is translation an act of betrayal? Because I feel like you can take it in a general sense, but I feel like with the way that the magic system works, it takes it in a much more literal sense and, like, is aiding the British Empire, like, essentially against your own people an act of betrayal. And you can kind of see Robin starting to grapple with that a bit because obviously he has benefited greatly from like all of these things that are going on. But he's also starting to realize that there are people like just in the world in different countries as well as people who are also in England that are like immensely impacted by these awful things happening because of the British Empire. And it's so interesting in the way that it's discussed. It's just so... Ooh, I love that part of this book so much. Also, since Robin is now in his third year of school, we're kind of seeing what his more advanced studies are like, and we're seeing a lot of, like, the lecturing that is going on in his classes, and honestly, I think it is so fascinating, because I know nothing about, like, translation, etymology, like, any of anything that pertains to that. We're also seeing some more like dark academia tones being brought into this book because we can see our main like group of four characters kind of getting further into their studies. You can definitely tell like they love it. Like they are very much into it. They live and breathe translation. There's also like a secret society of sorts that I won't tell you too much about but like that in and of itself is like peak dark academia. So I am very much enjoying this book. I think I'm a little bit under halfway, but I am going to take a little bit of a break from Babel, and I think I'm going to pick up a lesson in Vengeance. Just to kind of switch things up a bit, I want to, you know, dip into the YA. I'm going to pick that one up, read a little bit, and I will talk to you guys later. I'm still wearing the same sweatshirt, but we don't have to talk about it. But I do have two reading updates for you guys. First of all, as you guys will have seen, I did start a lesson in Vengeance, and I'm really enjoying this one so far. I absolutely love the setting of this book because, like I said, it takes place at this boarding school that's, like, up in the mountains, very secluded. Our main character is staying in this, like, very old house that is super, like, creepy, eerie, 
and I love that, obviously. Also, there are a lot of like witchy elements to this story because apparently like 300 years prior to the events of this book, there were five girls at this school who were supposedly witches that kind of died in mysterious ways. And our main character, Felicity, was actually heavily looking into that in her first attempt at her senior year because I guess this would probably be good information to know. But like halfway through her senior year, her girlfriend died. Um, we're not exactly sure how or why. We're kind of getting like small flashbacks like of that event, but like we don't really know a ton about it yet. So it's very like mysterious. But obviously after that happened, she had to leave the school and she couldn't complete her senior year. So this book opens up on her coming back the year after so she can like fully carry out her senior year so she can graduate. But for her initial senior year thesis project, she was pulling a lot of information from what happened to those girls in like the 1700s. And I'm kind of getting the vibe that she found out some things she probably shouldn't have stumbled upon. But at the point that we're at in the story, we're seeing her as she starts her senior year over again. Obviously, there are a bunch of new people in the house that she's living in, and we're kind of learning some things about them. There's this, like, one main girl who is called... What's her name? Ellis, I think. Initially, she seemed very, like, standoffish towards our main character, but I think I'm on page, like... 66 now so we're kind of starting to see them talk a little bit more and i think they're gonna become friends i don't exactly know what the plot of this book is gonna be yet but i think um we'll just see i'll just read some more and find out so that's kind of where i'm at with this right now i feel like i don't have too too much to say about it something i do really like is that our main character felicity is very into like gothic and like horror literature so like at one point in the book she was reading the haunting of hill house and i was like i freaking love that book overall i'm liking this book so far and i'm really excited to read some more of it and then I also do have an update on Babel because I've read quite a lot since the last time I talked to you. I'm on page 392. I'm really close to being on the last book, which is book five. And so, so many things so many things have happened since the last time that I talked to you. Like there's, I think it might be at the end of book uh, three. Um, some things happened. <laughs> some things have happened. And honestly, I was not expecting them at all. Like when it happened, I literally audibly gasped. I was like, you're joking, no way. But also, do I say deserved? Um, I mean, but also the intrigue, the drama that this adds to the story Yes. Just yes. So I think my goal for today is to focus on finishing Babel and then I will also be reading some more of A Lesson in Vengeance. But first, actually, I want to do a little bit of journaling. So that's what I'm going to do now. I want to make my page for my fall TBR and I'm so excited to be getting back into my fall journaling spreads because I love using all of my fall stickers. Like it's my favorite thing. Like a few days ago I made my fall to watch spread which I'm just going to show you guys because I'm also really excited about it. But I just put some like movies, TV shows, and books that I'm super excited to get to this season. Like obviously I have like a, a mini TBR here but I want to make like a full dedicated spread to my fall TBR but I love making a fall to watch spread so I just have a list of things that I want to watch so I don't forget them. I made one of these last year too and I really enjoyed having it but I thought we could go through some of the things that I'm really excited to consume this fall. First of all I discovered one of my new favorite fall movies last year and that is the 1999 Sleepy Hollow movie. It's so good and I cannot wait to give it a rewatch but I think that one I'm going to explicitly save for when I have a book that I recently ordered off of Pango. That's really vague, but it's a book that is set in Sleepy Hollow and I kind of want to like read and watch them in the same weekend, you know? So you'll see that, you'll see the book eventually. Like it's all good. I'm also super excited to obviously rewatch the Twilight movies. I've been holding off until I get a good rainy day, but it will be happening. I'm also really excited to get into watching Buffy the Vampire Slayer a little bit more because I was watching it on Hulu, but the ads on Hulu they're so abundant, it's insane. So I've decided I'm going to borrow the DVDs from the library <laughs> so I don't have to watch the ads anymore, but I just got one in. So I'm gonna start watching season one of Buffy again. I think I made it up to episode seven. So I'm gonna pick up from there and I'm really excited. And I'm also really excited to watch Over the Garden Wall. Like I cannot wait to do my yearly rewatch. I think this will be my fourth year in a row 
that I'm doing my yearly fall rewatch of it and I'm so excited. And then obviously I'm gonna watch some Vampire Diaries. Me and Elaine unfortunately have to do long distance Vampire Diaries nights now but we're still doing them and it's really fun and we're also gonna be reading more Vampire Diaries books together. Like in September I think we're reading books three and four out of the Vampire Diaries series so I'll probably show you guys that at some point because I'm very intrigued to see what else happens in that series because the first two books were something. Just kind of wanted to tell you guys a little bit about the stuff that I'm excited to watch this fall because I cannot wait to get into watching all the fall movies and TV shows. Like honestly, I just rewatch the same stuff every year, but it wouldn't be fall without them. But long tangent aside, I'm going to get into doing my journaling spread and I'll talk to you guys at some point in time, I would assume. <laughs> just finished Babel, Babel, whatever you want to call it. I'm gonna continue to call it Babel though, but I've heard it pronounced many different ways. Um, I, <laughs> I finished this book like 10 minutes ago and I, it, was, it was a harrowing experience, you know, <laughs> but it was so good. I went into this book um, like kind of expecting to somewhat like it, but I thought it was gonna be too dense and I thought I just wasn't really going to like absolutely love it. But I wanna read it again. Like I want to start this book over right now and read it again and like annotate it and like truly dissect everything that is happening because for the most part, I just absolutely adored this book. And I feel like just wow. One of the main things that I love about this book is just the absolute myriad of topics that it manages to touch on and discuss really well. Obviously the main theme is colonialism and like our main character Robin comes over from China and you're kind of seeing him throughout the entire book grappling with the fact that like people back in his motherland are like suffering at the hands of the British Empire but he was one of the select few that was brought to London and has greatly benefited due to all of these things that are happening and just all of the discussions surrounding that are so well done and so well researched as well 
well because this book is just like chocked full of information like it is incredibly well researched and you can just tell that months of work went into rf kuang writing this book like the text and the historical context and even the footnotes is just insane honestly however i do have a slight love hate relationship with the footnotes in this book because while I feel like they do add to like the the academic atmosphere and like giving you more context for certain things, sometimes when they're put after like certain things that are happening in the book, I feel like they're kind of over explaining things to me. And I'm like, yeah, I, I get it. Like I know, you know, I feel like those are things that I'm supposed to infer, but she's kind of just giving them to me. And I didn't love that. Also, obviously this is very much dark academia. That is the point of the vlog, so we gotta talk about it. I loved the exploration of the corruption that is in academia, but it's also kind of juxtaposed against the fact that like our main characters love Oxford and they love being there and they can't imagine being anywhere else, but they're still recognizing the issues that exist within the system and what their part is in kind of feeding into that. And that is also just such, just like, there's so many good, discussions going on in this book and I feel like they're all really well thought out and explored and discussed. It obviously talks a lot about colonialism but kind of going off of that it talks about the racism and sexism that kind of feeds into that. Also there's a character in this book that heavily introduces discussions of intersectionality and I feel like I don't see that a lot in books or maybe I'm just not reading enough books with those discussions in it but like seeing the setup for it and kind of what happened with that character was also so well done. I feel like the update that I gave for this earlier was a little short <laughs> because um, I just witnessed a very harrowing thing the last time I talked to you. But let me tell you, I have witnessed many more harrowing things since that update and it, <laughs> This book is sad. Like this book has made me feel quite a range of emotions such as sadness, there's a lot of sadness, um, rage, naturally. No happiness though, that has not happened in this book. I don't think this book is exactly a new favorite book, but the appreciation that I have for what this book is doing is just like, there's a lot of it. <laughs> I wish I was articulate enough to like fully convey my thoughts about this book, but like there are a million other people who have probably conveyed their thoughts really well, so um, props to them, but that's kind of um, that's this book. I'm a little sad that I started with this one because I feel like I just, I just need to think about this book a lot, you know? But I have two other books that I need to finish in this vlog. So, um, let's talk about those for a second because I need to stop thinking about Babel, you know? Well, actually I don't need to stop, but like in this moment, I need to stop thinking about it, you know? I have not read any more of A Lesson in Vengeance. I guess that's all I had to say about the other books. <laughs> Tomorrow, I am planning on doing a fun dark academia thing, you know, cause I feel like for this vlog, I've just been sitting in my room, <laughs> which is how most of my vlogs go. But I was thinking maybe I should leave the house and like go somewhere dark academia-esque. You know what I'm saying? So tomorrow morning, I'm going to go to the library downtown, which is very pretty, very beautiful inside. I'm gonna put on a little sweater vest and I'm gonna read a little bit. So I am excited about that. And yeah, that's kind of my plan for tomorrow. I'm hoping I can finish at least one of the other books tomorrow, but we'll see. But like, I'm not gonna read anything else tonight because I need to recover from Babel because whew, I'm going to go and I'll talk to you guys later.
So it is later. I do have somewhat of a reading update for you, which we'll talk about in a second. But first, I do have a package that I want to unbox because this is a book that I'm planning on reading this fall and I'm so excited about it. So let's open it. Don't wanna... Ta-da! Look at her. I think the cover for this book is so pretty, honestly. Like, look at it. But here we have the strange case of the alchemist's why is that so hard to say? The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter by Theodora Goss. I have heard not a ton of people talk about this book, but it has definitely been on my radar. I believe one of you guys also suggested this to me at some point, so thanks. But recently, I think I was watching... Who was I watching? It might have been... Meg with books. I saw her talking about like underrated series that she absolutely loves and this is one of them. And I had already known about this one. I thought it seemed really good for fall. So I was like, all right, fine, I'll buy it. And I found this hardcover for like 10 bucks on eBay. So I was pretty happy about that. Now, honestly, I don't know a ton about this book, but I believe you are following the daughters of like gothic kind of characters. You have Mary Jekyll, Catherine Moreau, Justine Frankenstein. Those are the, the people that you're following. And I think that sounds like a really fun concept. Do I have any idea what they're doing together? No, but that is for me to figure out and eventually let you guys know because I will be picking this up in the fall. I feel like the fall is the perfect time for this book, so I'm super excited about it. I think I need to figure out when this takes place, but I'm assuming it takes place in like Victorian London? That's what I'm hoping for, so we'll see. But as you guys will have seen earlier, I did go to the library. I read like 10 pages of If We Were Villains and that's all I got. So. I don't really have an update for you guys on this, but I am going to fully get into it later tonight and let you guys know. Because from the first couple of pages, it seems like I'm really gonna like it. So I'm excited to read some more. However, I do have quite an update for you on A Lesson in Vengeance because I am on page 163 now. And I'm kind of liking it. Like, I don't know. I feel like the plot is very meandering. Like, I feel like I kind of know what the general premise and like the thing that they are trying to accomplish in this book is, maybe? But it's taken a while to get here. And I also feel like as a Dark Academia book, it's not exactly what Dark Academia is in like my opinion and what I'm kind of assuming the genre is like about. Because I think it pulls a lot from like the general aesthetic of Dark Academia and like the school setting and the secret societies and the fashion, the pretentiousness. Like I feel like it covers those bases well, but I feel like it doesn't really hit on that like undying obsession that these students have for learning and like academia. And like it's kind of there, but it's not there quite as much as I feel like it should be for a Dark Academia book. Like I feel like it, it hits the aesthetic really well, but like the general meaning behind it, I feel like it doesn't really get there. And like I don't know a ton about Dark Academia, so like maybe I'm way off base here, but like that's kind of what I'm getting from what I've read so far. But that's not to say that I'm not enjoying it because generally I like the vibes. Like it passes the vibe check. <laughs> But I don't know if I care that much about the plot. The characters are kind of interesting. It has definitely taken a very witchy turn though. And I do definitely like that because we are kind of delving more into those five girls that were murdered in very mysterious ways. So I'm enjoying that. And like the kind of catalyst for us learning more about that is the girl Ellis, like the new girl that has kind of shown up at school. She was like an award-winning author. She's only 17, but she's an award-winning author and I'm like, all right, sure. I mean, I know it can happen, but uh, like, I don't know. For her second book, she has decided that she wants to include a lot about the witches and her main character, Felicity, was recently like researching the witches for her former thesis project. So she is helping Ellis with like the research kind of stuff. But the thing is, Ellis is a very like, She's like a method actor, but for writing, she is a, a method writer, if you will. So she really gets into it. So they decide that they are going to essentially start their own coven and do witchy things. So I don't exactly know what that entails, um, but I'm intrigued to find out. Like this book is fine, you know, I'm not loving it. So I did pick up the audiobook so I could kind of listen to it while I'm doing other things because recently, and as in recently, I mean like literally yesterday, I decided that I wanted to crochet something else. It's really boring, but I'm gonna show you guys anyway, because I decided that I wanted to crochet a pillowcase for fall. So 
Um, that's literally what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm going to put this when I've finished it on a throw pillow. That's literally it. <laughs> I think I might try and crochet some tiny leaves to sew on here. I think that could be kind of cute because I think like just orange by itself might be boring, but we'll see, you know, but that's kind of what I'm working on while I'm listening to the audiobook. And honestly, the audiobook and crochet combo, top tier. But um, I'm gonna continue to listen to my audiobook and work on this. But later tonight, I do want to start If We Were Villains. So yeah, I'm gonna go do those things. And I will probably end up talking to you guys tomorrow, hopefully with some good reading updates. For the aesthetic was like an old money kind of thing and i have this string of totally not fake pearls that i totally did not find from the thrift store but it's too long but there we go <laughs> okay so it is a couple of days later and i have such an exciting update because i have read more of if we were villains and this book is so good i am just loving it so so much i am on page 164 now so i'm a, like almost exactly halfway through it. I'm so excited to report that I'm loving this book, to be honest. So as I said in the intro of this video, in this book, you are following seven students who are in their fourth year of college. They attend this like very artsy college that focuses on like music and art and theater and singing and that kind of stuff, you know? And they are all heavily into Shakespeare. The only productions that they put on at the school are, you know, Shakespeare plays and they're really into it. They're quoting it 24 seven. There are a lot of like excerpts from Shakespeare plays like as they are performing them in this book. And honestly, I thought this book might have made me feel like I want to read Shakespeare. But honestly, reading this book has made me realize that I do not want to read Shakespeare. <laughs> because while I enjoy it in this context, I feel like every time Shakespeare is quoted, I have to reread it like three times to fully understand what they're trying to say and what it means in the context of this story. But like trying to sit down and read an entire Shakespeare play, I know that is not for me, like right now at least. Maybe at some point I will read Shakespeare because I know I really want to read Macbeth at some point, but kind of reading this, I'm like, mm, maybe not. But you know, maybe that is a, a trial that I will tackle at another point in time in my life. But right now, it's a big no. But I am really enjoying it in this book. Like just their unabashed, unabashed? Is that a word? I need to look into this, hang on. Unabashed. <laughs> I think that's the word I was looking for. Their unabashed devotion and passion for studying and performing Shakespeare is, I like, I love reading about it. Like just reading about anybody who is that devoted to any sort of topic that they're studying it's just so lovely, honestly. And like, this book is not lovely. <laughs> like, trust me, it's not. Like, there's a lot of things going down that are like, not. Because you're kind of following them in the lead up to their next performance. They're performing Julius Caesar. I'm sure if I knew anything about Julius Caesar, that would, I could draw some conclusion and like connect that to the things that are happening in the book. But I don't, <laughs> so you know. Whatever. But in the lead up to their opening night, kind of tensions are rising high between this group. There's a lot of fighting. The power dynamic is really off. And it's just like, you can tell that something bad is about to happen. Like as the tensions rise, so does my level of concern for these characters. And I've made it to act three, I think, because this book is split up into four acts, like a Shakespeare play is split up into acts. I really like that. And then like all the chapters, they're called like scenes instead of chapters. And I, I thought, you know, the Shakespeare theming and the format of the book is fun. But at the point that I'm at in this book, shit has hit the fan. Like things have happened. And honestly, it's kind of juicy. Like it's juicy, but it's also scary. Scary times. But this book also opens up on one of our main characters just freshly getting out of jail. And he is telling this like police chief or like former police chief, like the guy that put him in prison 10 years ago, 
what actually happened. So like, we're not exactly sure if Oliver is the one who is to blame for this or if like, other people in the group are to blame for this and like that's kind of what we're trying to figure out. I have my own predictions as to what I think happened. I will not share them though but if I'm right I'll let you know if I'm right but you won't know what I'm right about. But I just love the way this book is written to be honest because even though not a lot is happening. Getting to know these characters and like the group dynamic and like seeing the obsession and like passion that they all have is so well written and I am loving this book. Like it's just, I'm just really liking it. So um, I have about 170 pages left. I'm really hoping to finish it because also I feel like it's a really fast read. I'm excited, nervous, scared, intrigued, shall we say, to read the rest of this book, but it's really good. So, um, yeah, also something I do want to mention really quickly is that this book specifically gives me the exact same, like, feeling that I got when I was reading The Secret History. And like, that's like a very specific feeling that I had while I was reading this book, but this book I feel like hits it to a T, but I'm liking this book so much more than I was liking The Secret History. But like the college that it's set at and like the group dynamic that's in this, it's very reminiscent, but it's also very much its own thing. And it's just so good. I'm going to go read some of this, but actually before I do that, I do have a little book to show you guys because I got a book in the mail yesterday off of my Amazon wishlist and I'm so excited about this one because it is perfect for the upcoming spooky season. And that is... What do you call it again? Uh, what Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher. I've been wanting to read literally anything by T. Kingfisher for such a long time. I feel like her books just have like the kind of atmosphere that I am going to love. And I was literally thinking like two days ago, like, damn, I need to read some T. Kingfisher. And then this one showed up in the mail. I was like, no way, Jane, you are reading my mind because this book did come from Jane. She said, this is a late graduation slash early birthday gift. Hope you enjoy the creep factor in this. I laughed out loud a few times while reading it. Also, congrats on being so close to 60K from Jane. Jane, thank you so, so much. I am so excited. I love the fact that this is creepy, but it also made you laugh. I cannot wait to see what that's all about. But first of all, the cover of this book is honestly like stunning, like creepy, yes, but stunning. And also the end papers in this, like I, incredibly creepy, but I still love them. Like, look at that. That's so cool. Oh, I didn't even see this. Oh my God. Oh, the bats. You're freaking joking. <laughs> I am so excited about this. I do believe that this is a retelling of the fall of the house of Usher, which I actually read for summer ween. So like, perfect. I'm so excited. If it has a creepy house in it, I'm all for it. So I, I literally cannot wait. I don't know anything else about it, to be honest, but I don't need to know anything else about it. This one is also super short, so I'm very intrigued. Although I guess the fall of the House of Usher was a short story as well. So I suppose that makes sense, but I just, I cannot wait to read this. This one is definitely going to be on my TBR for October. So thank you so much, Jane, for padding my spooky reading with a T. Kingfisher book. So cannot wait to read this because if I like this, I will be reading all of T. Kingfisher's books. So um, yeah, I just wanted to show you guys that because I was so excited about it. So I'm going to get to reading and hopefully finishing If We Were Villains and I will talk to you guys later.
it is later. <laughs> Guys, you know it's gonna be a good update when I just like can't, like, I don't even know. <laughs> you know it's gonna be a good update. <laughs> but I just finished If We Were Villains and Weenie Wants Out, hang on. I just finished If We Were Villains and I think this is gonna be one of my favorite books of the year. It was so good. But like the last 10 pages of this book kind of ripped my heart out and stomped on it, which I did not appreciate. I just absolutely loved this book. It was so good. It was so intense. I love what the Shakespearean-ness added to it. And I'm gonna have to articulate my thoughts better about this like tomorrow or something because I finished this like five minutes ago. So all my thoughts are like very fresh on it, but I also want to put it out there because I'm so proud of myself <laughs> because the prediction that I had like literally less than halfway through this book as to like who did it and why they did it was correct. And that's never happened before. <laughs> and I'm pretty excited about it. And honestly, like it doesn't even bother me that I figured that out because I feel like the point of this book isn't really who did it and like why. I mean, like it kind of is, but also like I'm just not upset that I figured it out because I feel like this book is so about the characters and like who they are as people and what their group dynamic is that like, I don't even care. <laughs> like, I don't care that I figured it out. No, like, real substantial thoughts are going to be given in this update, but I just want to let you guys know that I finished it and I freaking loved it. <laughs> Which surprises me so much. I would describe this somewhat as, like, a, um, like a literary thriller of sorts. Like, a little murder mystery thingy in there as well. And I just didn't think that would be something that I would consider to be one of my favorite books of the year but like just the characters and it was so well written. And I, again, I will give you better thoughts on this tomorrow. <laughs> but for now, I'm just like, wow. <laughs> but um, I, oh, I have some things I wanna show you because I did do a little bit of like spooky shopping or whatever earlier today when I was out and about. And I have some things that I'm really excited about. So I'm gonna take a break on just like giving you not useful opinions on this book and I'm gonna show you some fun things. So first of all, I went to Target mainly in search of a candle and I found it and it is like this little black candle and it says deadly nightshade on it if it would. There we go. And I love that so much and it smells really nice too. It's described as a scented candle with ghost essence and almond cream. Creme? Probably creme. And I thought that was so cute. And I love this. I got a little green candle also from Target a few weeks ago, but I'd really been wanting the Deadly Nightshade one. So I was so excited. And they also had these little pillows in their like cheap stuff section. And I found this little ghost pillow and he's so cute. Sorry, I'm just like, I'm having a moment right now and this ghost pillow is really just helping me out with it. I love him. He's so, oh, I love him so much. I cannot wait to put him with his brethren. We have this guy. Anyway, I love him so much and he's just gonna sit there. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> and then I also went to Michael's and I found some fun stuff. So first of all, I got these little pumpkin cookie cutters because I have like tiny hand pies, I suppose you would call them, that I wanna make. And I needed a pumpkin cookie cutter for that. And I will show you that in a vlog at some point in time, probably later in September, or it's probably later in September as I'm posting this. Sometime soon. <laughs> There'll be some baking on the channel and I'm gonna use these and then I also got some washi tape Also from Michaels. I love this bat washi tape. This is primarily why I bought it I'm not a super big fan of the skulls, but I love anything with bats on it So when I saw this I was like you are coming home with me. Thank you <laughs> today has been great Honestly, because I got some fun spooky things. I finished This book I need to go finish a lesson in vengeance and honestly, I'm really not that excited about it because I've read two phenomenal books in this vlog, so like thinking about going to read A Lesson in Vengeance, which like isn't bad, but it's just not the same. You know, like I'm still gonna finish it. I have like four hours of the audiobook left, so I'm gonna do some cleaning and whatnot while I finish my audiobook, and I'll probably wrap the vlog up tomorrow. So I'm sorry for the chaotic update. <laughs> I have a lot of feelings right now, but I'm gonna go, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> Hello. Tis I. I'm here with my stack of books and my pumpkin, what do you call it? Um, pumpkin cream chai from Starbucks. 
ready to give you guys my final update for the vlog. Honestly, I'm really sad that this vlog is over because I've had such a fun time filming it, so I really hope you guys also liked it. But shall we talk about the final reading updates that I have for you? Yes, I think we shall. So first up, I'm gonna talk about this first. Um, I finished a lesson in Vengeance last night as well. And like, it was fine. <laughs> I don't know. This book, it just wasn't my favorite. I think in the beginning, I was really enjoying it. Like the general atmosphere of the book was really good. And I did still really enjoy the atmosphere throughout the book. But I feel like this book is like a witchy, dark academia. But I feel like it doesn't fully go into either of those things very well. And it sits very much at the surface level of those concepts. In my personal opinion, I kind of feel like both of those concepts were used for aesthetics. And like, that's fine, but it's just not exactly what I was wanting for this video. And I feel like the main problem for me at least was the fact that this was a young adult dark academia, so it didn't exactly get as far into the dark academia elements as I wanted it to because it couldn't be that dark because it is young adult. It wasn't exactly what I was looking for, but it was fine. I do, however, think this book has really good representation for like mental health. I think it's definitely a very interesting book, and if I had like adjusted my expectations for it, I I probably would have enjoyed it more, but maybe you'll like this book. Who knows? But then the other thing that I am really excited to talk about is If We Were Villains, because I finally have somewhat formulated some thoughts on it. Somewhat. <laughs> Obviously, I freaking love this book, and I think it definitely will be in my top books of the year, which is just so insane to me because I went into this video thinking like, oh, I don't even know if I like Dark Academia. But here I am like a week later, like, oh my god, look at her. Ah, I love it. <laughs> I think um, the main thing that I really loved about this book, obviously, is the characters. This is a very character-based book. And while you do have this like murder, mystery, thrillery type of element running through the book, I feel like primarily the main point of the story is to just follow these characters, follow the friendship group, see what their group dynamic is. And I thought it was so interesting and it was so well written. Seeing how the group dynamic like developed and changed over the course of the book was just really interesting and kind of just seeing them all fall apart. Sad yet very fascinating. I just really like these characters. I feel like even though you're following seven people, which I feel like is a lot of people to follow in a single book, I thought everybody still felt very distinct and they added like their own personal thing to the story. Also, I loved what the Shakespeare elements of this book added to the story. And like, I don't know a damn thing about Shakespeare to be honest. Like obviously very surface level pop culture references, I get those. But like for the most part, I got nothing. <laughs> And I thought that was really going to impact my reading experience, but honestly, like, I didn't even care. I think with the way it's written, it's helpful if you know things about Shakespeare, and I feel like if I had read any of the plays that they were performing in this book, I would probably be able to, like, kind of parse something from that and apply it to the story. But even without being able to do that, I still found this book really impactful and I really appreciated the Shakespeare elements to this story. Because over the course of the book, you see them put on two different, or three, four? I think you see them put on four different Shakespeare productions. So they do Julius Caesar, they do Macbeth for Halloween, which I'll talk about that in a second. They do Romeo and Juliet for like this Christmas thing, and then they also do King Lear at the end of the book, and that's kind of when everything falls apart. But throughout the book, you are kind of with them as they are performing, like you are reading descriptions of the play, and even though it is just them performing Shakespeare, it's so much more than that because the way that they are performing Shakespeare really reveals a lot about the characters and where they're at with each other. Like you can just tell with the intensity of their emotions on stage and how they are interacting with the other actors on stage. You can just see their emotions coming through their performance, but it doesn't impact the performance. It just makes it different. Like it enhances it almost. And being able to like portray emotions through people just performing Shakespeare, I think is such an interesting concept and I loved how it was written. Also, back to the whole like Macbeth thing, I forgot to bring this up in my last update, but like every holiday, they kind of have certain things that different like departments of the school do, like seasonal things. So for Halloween, all of like the, the theater, the thespians, if you will, they put on Macbeth, like they perform it on the beach on Halloween night. And I think I love that part. Honestly, any book that has any sort of Halloween celebration going on, I'm bound to really like it. 
And also something I thought was fun, this doesn't really have anything to do with anything, I just thought it was very, I thought it was a really interesting concept. For like Macbeth, they were given their character assignments in like little envelopes and they're supposed to keep it secret, like nobody else knows. And on Halloween night, they kind of just show up and they perform, like no practice, no rehearsal, no nothing, nobody knows who each other is, they're just, they're just going for it. <laughs> and like honestly, that would stress the hell out of me, but I, I it was really fun to read. And honestly, I feel like it's kind of, weird for me to say that I really liked this book because it is essentially written as a tragedy, like it is supposed to mirror a Shakespearean tragedy. But like the end of this book kind of, like I said it yesterday, but it did rip my heart out and stomp on it a little bit. <laughs> and I didn't love that. I mean, like I did, but I didn't. Because the end of this book is really sad, but it's also like somewhat hopeful. And I just, I felt so many emotions reading this book. I can't even like, exactly pinpoint why I liked this book so much, but I was just enthralled from page one. So, um, this book. It's like the secret history, but better, but queer, but just like amazing. So, um, read If We Were Villains. If you guys read The Secret History and didn't like it, trust me. And then obviously I'm here to wrap up the vlog, so I also read Babel. <laughs> I've already said so much about Babel, so I'm just gonna leave it at that. You should also read Babel. It's great. It's thought-provoking, it's poignant, it is just really good. Yeah, um, I feel like I just read two phenomenal books in this vlog. Like, I loved both of these so much. I think If We Were Villains is my favorite, and now this is my favorite dark academia book, but I feel like Babel's doing more, but this is just my favorite. This one was really good too, so I just like... But um, we are at the end of the vlog. So as I said before, I really hope you enjoyed this because this is turning out to be like one of my favorite vlogs that I've ever done. So I really hope you guys like it. But um, I would love to know if you guys have read any of these books, please let us talk about them. That'd be fun. Or if you guys have any dark academia recommendations for me, I need recommendations because I am now like I need more. You know, like I've been given a taste and I must read so many more. So if you have like a favorite that you want to see me read, please let me know because I want to read some more. Or if you guys don't like Dark Academia and you're still here, let me know why because I was there too. Like I was really there at one point. So now I'm seriously gonna go. Actually before I go, thank you so so much to everybody over on my Patreon. I love you guys and thank you so much for the support. If you guys ever want extra content from me, it is always linked down below. We do some fun stuff over there. We do extra videos, journaling content, a monthly buddy read this week this week. This month we are reading A River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross and I'm so excited about it. And we also do quarterly readathons. Our next ones in October is going to be spooky and fun. I already have it all planned out and I'm so excited. So come and join us if you want. But I am now actually going to let you go. Thank you so, so much again for watching. I hope you're all having a fantastic day, a fantastic September, and I'll see you guys in my next video.